Hello students, welcome to distance learning with Nirpendra Acharya. Now in this video, uh, what we are going to study, you will see this matrix. Now this video is for grade 90 students and it is a part 1 of matrix. And there are several parts. Now application of matrix, you can see a major application of matrix is to represent linear transformation and what is linear transformation you have a basic knowledge of transformation as you have studied about the rotation reflection uh, uh, translation uh, from in class 8 and in class 9 also now you are, you are going to study enlargement uh, there is a there are four fundamental transformation so now it is applied uh, in, in detail it is applied uh, matrix is applied a matrix is represented as a linear transformation and uh, questions related and problem related to this uh, matrix representation of trans linear transformation you will study in class 10 and as well as uh, we use uh, matrix to solve the system of linear equation as we have as you have done in class 8 uh, by graphical method so same thing you can do by matrix and this also we are going to study in class 10 its introduction and how matrix is built uh, we are going to study about it for this now we are considering gp of a student on three subjects across three terminal examination across three terminal example on three major subjects uh, you can see it is in table form and these are the gps obtained by student on english math science on first second and third terms now let's reconstruct this table in a different way These are the GPs. Here you can see table boundary boundaries are removed, and it is just written uh, in a different form. Nothing is done actually. Table boundaries are removed. Now you can see English and this vertical line. You can see English, the GP obtained on subject English on this vertical line, math on this vertical line, and science on this vertical line. You can, also, you can see the marks obtained uh, on first term GP, sorry, not marks, grade point obtained on first term, grade point obtained on second term, grade point obtained on third term. You can see. Terms they are in horizontally, they are horizontal in the second term. All the math, all the GPs on second term, you can see 4.0, 4.0, 3.6 in horizontal line, 3.6, 4.0, 4.0 on horizontal line. That is a GP obtained on third term. Grade point obtained by student on three subject. Grade point obtained on a student on three subject on first terminal examination. You can see grade point obtained by student. It's written on horizontal line, isn't it? It's written in horizontal line. GP obtained across three subjects. GP obtained on three subjects on first terminal exam is you can see in a horizontal line, and that horizontal line is called row. So I think you know in general way also row is a horizontal line. Row is always in horizontal form, and you can see in another GP obtained by student on one subject. Across three ter terminal examination is on vertical line, which is called column. You can see English. The GP obtained on Eng English uh, across three terminal examination. That is three point six four point zero. It is in on vertical line, and that vertical line is called column. So its a column means vertical, row means horizontal. Now let's change this subject. Uh, English, math, and science. Let's remove this first term, second term, third term, and English, math, science. Let's remove the subjects. Let's remove the terms. And now our table will be on. Our arrangement will be on actually. You can see these are the uh, columns. These are rows.
column 1, column 2, column 3, row 1, row 2, and row 3. So now we started with the GP of a student on three subjects across three terminal examination. Now we are finally, now we are on all those GPs are like an arrangement of numbers on a row and column. Is a rectangular arrangement of numbers. You can see it, it is just a rectangular. If if somebody follows from right here, right here, and it, uh, he or she does not know it is a it is a GP, then they will say that it is an arrangement of numbers, and they are in row and column, isn't it? Now, so numbers are represented on row and column. We started with the table form, and actually initially it was uh, uh, it was it was uh, three subjects and. GP opted on three subjects. Now it is just a number, arrangement of number on row and column. Now let us enclose this rectangular arrangement of numbers represented on rows and column on bracket. And you can see the bracket, the small bracket or a bigger bracket, like you can see. These are the number, arrangement of number, represented on rows and column. Now let's enclose these numbers on a bracket. You can see the bracket. And actually, this is a matrix. Now what is a matrix? Matrix is nothing but a arrangement of number on rows and column. So if we can arrange the number, any numbers, in, in row and column form, then we can say the, the particular arrangement is called matrix matrix is simply arrangement of numbers now you can see the definition a matrix in plural there are matrices is a rectangular arrangement of numbers of numbers projected on rows and column enclosed by bracket arrangement of number presented on rows and columns okay it, it must be columns here, plural, enclosed by bracket, rows and column, columns enclosed by bracket. You can see you can use bracket, this type of bracket also. You can use this type of bracket also. And matrix are generally are denoted usually or almost every time matrix are denoted by capital capital letter. Now let's see the example. These are the examples of matrix. You can see different form of matrix, different shape and size of matrix. We will study about it later. Now, as a matrix is one big house, then what we call 3.6, 4.0, 3.2 as. If it is a big house, now this, this, this matrix is a big house, then those living inside the house are called, those who reside in the house are called, the, your answer is here. They are members of matrix. Now you can know they are family members, isn't it? In a house, if we live in a house, our father, mother, brother, sister, we all are family members. So the representative of a house, those person who lives in a house, or those people belongs to a single house, all the people belongs to single house, they are family members. So likewise, these elements, this 3.6, 4.0, 3.2 are the members of matrix, or we call them. And elements or integer, or we can say components of matrix. Any any word or any term you can use. Okay, you can give one example of matrix on your house, and you can pause the video and you can think, look around your house, look on the walls, and the answer is calendar. You can see the calendar. That's the perfect representation of matrix, and different ones are uh, are different matrices. Okay, this was in a in this slide. Let's move to another one. Let us consider a matrix. You can see the same matrix. A equal to 3.6, 4 4.0, 3.2, 4.0, 4.0, 3.6. Now you can see this is column. These are columns. These are rows. And rows, column 1, column 2, column 3, row 1, row 2. Okay, there are questions and you can answer those questions. How many columns are there? 
how many columns are there you can easily uh, say the number of columns are three columns and let's represent columns by C and how many rows are there you can easily answer it and there are two rows let's represent it by two now order of or you can say size of matrix now we are into the size of matrix order of matrix is nothing but number of rows are cross now this cross is same as cross of Cartesian product not multiply just cross order of matrix is nothing but number of rows cross number of columns it is written as you can see it is written as subscript R into C uh, in the bracket subscript as a subscript in a bracket R into C R into C now there is one more question for you you can say size of matrix also for order of matrix what is the order of ever matrix now you, you can easily answer this question an answer is order of matrix A that is you can see R into C that is 2 cross 3 always order of matrix is rows rows cross column so row or rows column or columns a row cross column that is there are only two rows you can clearly see there are two rows here you can see two rows and three columns so order of the matrix A which is given uh, is 2 cross 3 now let's construct various uh, types of matrix uh, from the given matrix now this is the, our given matrix A is our given matrix so from here we are going to construct different type of matrix now construct of matrix B of order 1 cross 1 we can pick any one element or we can say any one member now right now we just picked 3.6 you can say we pick this 3.6 or you can say this 3.6 now just it is first one row one column we have to pick the matrix we have to construct a matrix with only one row and only one column and that kind of matrix has only one members only one member so the matrix with one row and one column only has one member so you can see 3.6 or you can you can pick any 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 one okay you just you can pick four also you can pick three also 3.2 also 4.0 4.0 any one with one row and one column now construct a matrix c of order two cross one now be careful two is row and one is column isn't it two is row we have our matrix must have two rows so let's pick this one how many rows are there you can clearly see there are two rows and one column so our answer will be you can pick any one okay any 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 you can construct any matrix with two rows and one column <coughs> sorry and next one construct a matrix d of order 2 plus 2 now there must be two rows and two columns and for this two rows and two columns now we can pick from here there are two rows and two columns two rows and two columns there are two rows you can see clearly see two rows and two columns isn't it two columns up to here that is two columns now let's construct another matrix with one row and three columns only one row and three columns now that means we have two options to pick one row and three columns yeah, 3.6 you can see the answer 3.6 3.4.0 and 3.2 one row there is only one row and three columns one row and three columns now again how many elements does a matrix A has? Now to find how many how many elements are there in a matrix, we have to multiply a row and column. This time it is multiplied, it is not cross, it is multiplied. That is, there are two rows and three columns, so two into three, there are six elements on this matrix. Isn't it? So it's easy. Now let's move to another slide. Now let us study the given matrix. And there is at another matrix. You can see the matrix with uh, order to cross it. There are two rows and three columns. But it is clearly seen there are two rows, one row and two columns, and there are three columns. So, what are A, B, X, D, C, Y? A, B, X, and D, C, Y are the members or elements of the matrix. We have already discussed about it. Uh, we generally write matrix as the general representation of matrix. And these are the elements they are the perfect elements you can see now general way a very general way to represent every matrix now you can clearly see 
we have to represent matrix in a general way now there is an alphabet capital a so its entries or you can say members will be small a now what does a11 don't read as 11 read as a11 now a11 means this is the location of this element the right here this location of this element is on first row and first column isn't it now in a class also somebody uh, will sit on the first bench that's first row and first column is in the first one and very first very in the is in the first in in the side where uh, where the movement of teacher is frequent isn't it so uh, usually student don't want to sit on that that and that's place so it is first row and first column and what does a one two means it is first row and row is first isn't it uh, throughout it will be first row first row and second column here first row and third column column it changes but row is constant this is first row isn't first row so here this is second row it is second row you can see the elements will be a21 that is second row first column a22 that is second row second column a23 that is second row third column so in this way we can understand it's a general way of writing uh, a general way of representing matrix and what does a11 means we have already discussed about this it means the element lie on first row and first column and another question what does a23 means it means that element lie on second row third column and what does a32 means and that means element lie on third row and second column so you can see by the green color also these all these questions a11 a23 is in the green color so it's represent the location so there is something for you so we can write the elements of matrix as in this way depending on the order order depending on the order of matrix now if the matrix is 3 cross 3 and this is the way to represent the matrix if the matrix is uh, 2 cross 2 let's see how it will be represented if our matrix is a then we are going to construct a 2 cross 2 matrix that means the matrix will have two rows and two columns first let's complete the row now the first element will be a11 always and as we have uh, two columns this is the first column this element is in first column so it will be uh, a12 and similarly a21 and a22 now you, can, you can pick from here also now these elements from here to here are the are the, are the it's a general way of representing a two cross row matrix a22 there are two rows and two columns this means two row and two columns now in a general way very general way if we don't know the exact number of rows and columns then we represent as a i j that means number of rows is i that is row that is rows is i and column is j okay now let's move to another slide explanation of aij now how it will be explained it is a position or location of element now actually we have already discussed about it where the element is placed or where and what is the position of that element it is the position or location of element on a matrix inside the matrix where the actual uh, element is located now you can see the example there d we have the example d now what is the position of element minus 7 in the matrix d the answer is let uh, Let's write the matrix D in the general form as D11. As I have already told, if the if the matrix is written in D, then its entry will start. It's written as a small D. D11, D12, as it is a two cross two matrix, so it ends with two cross two. <coughs> now, as we it is asked that uh, position of minus seven, you can see by the color also minus seven lie on first row, second column. Uh, so minus 7 equal to d12 means it is on first row second column isn't it first row second column 1 2 means first row second column you can easily answer this type of question what is the position of element 3 in a matrix d now again in the same way we can do let You can see the element 3 here, right here, and you can see the position that is second row, second column. 
So 3 equal to D to 2 hence it is on second row, second column. And this explains now AIJ, what does AIJ means? Uh, there is, let's play, there is like a game here. It is a class 9 and sitting position of a student. You can see, you can pause the video and you can guess the answer for. Uh, this is a classroom and this is a door. It's a door. Then that means here it is starts, matrix is start from here, exactly from here. Now you can see the, the name of a student written on, on the back of their chair. So now all those questions you can answer these questions. It's for you to do all these questions are there for you. You can play with your friend also. Okay, you can do this. Now you can try these questions. Uh, they are very simple question. You have to define general questions. A uh, defined matrix uh, we can define. And uh, what do we understand by the order of matrix? You can do that. If this is how many elements are there, you can count and write. Uh, what's the order of this matrix? You can do easily. Now. Example 1, and this is very important example. We have to construct a matrix. Uh, don't forget i is row and j is column. We have to construct this i is ij is the very general way of representing a matrix. And you can see this is i is row and j is column. J is called now solution and aij equal to 3i minus 5j and let's write the general form because as there is an order we have we need two rows and three columns so we have to write the general form of matrix a11 a12 a13 we move up to 13 because we need three columns and 21 we have two rows so we it ends with two it ends with two and it you can see it ends with three two three now let's let's do in table form components first we were we are going to write components these are components a11 a12 a13 components row i and value of row i that is i'm going to explain you later on now the value given by aij you can see a11 i equal to 1 j equal to 1 and a11 is equal to minus 2 now how now let's see the explanation a11 if we pick our uh, elements as a11, our component, our entries as a11. Now this one is, and this one, you can see these two one represent different things. That's i and that's j. So the first one is the value of i and second one is the value of j. Isn't it? The first one is the value of i. So i, value of i is 1 and value of j is 1. And if we replace 3 into 1, if we replace the i and j by 1 and 1, then we can answer minus 2. In the same way, uh, we can write a12 also. In a12, the this one is i, and this two is j. So then we know the value of ij, so we can replace the value of ij here, and we get minus seven and answer. So in the same way, in the same way, you can find the value of all those uh, components, and you can write the matrix. Hence, the matrix A is we have supposed as this, so same will be written, and which is equal to let's uh, replace the values. You can see by the color also A11 that is A11 that is minus 2, and A12 that is minus 7, A13 that is minus 2 will, and so on okay uh, there are questions for you try this
Now you have to construct the matrix in the same way. Now it's 3 cross 3, then we have to write the component matrix in the same way. And if there is 2 cross 2 in, a, in the same way, and you can see the order here 2 cross 3 and 3 cross 2. You can try this question, you can pause the video, you can complete these 5 questions, and you can move forward. Example 2. Now, this is a very general question and it will test uh, your knowledge uh, up to now how much you have understood matrix. You can see the question and the values of B23, B12, we, we can easily find these values. You can see the matrix B and its general form is, you can see the general form is B11, B12, B13 and we can easily write, you can easily write this is B11, first row first column, you can see sec, first row second column and first row third column, isn't it? So second row first column. Second row, second column, second row, third column. Now we know that is B11 is 2, B12 is 0, B13 is minus 1, B21 is minus 4, B22 is 5, and B23 is 3. Now the answer for the question is for answer question number 1 is B23. You can see the B23. Where is B23? B23 is 3. And B12, you can see B12, B12 is 0. And this computes our first answer of this first. And now B13. Now B13 is equal to 1. You can see in the equation there is 1 in the equation. So we have 1 here, right here, or you can say 1 here or 1 here. So that 1, the location of this 1 is first row, third column, first row, third column. So B13 is equal to 1, which is equal to B1J. It is already given that 1 is B1J. And we know 1 lies on first row, third column. The position of 1 is first row, third column. So we can equate this. Now you can see 1 and 1. Here you can see 1 and 1 right here. 1 is equal to 1, which means you can see 3 will be equal to. 3 will be equal to j. j is equal to 3. Now we easily found the value of j as 3. Okay, if you have any confusion, then let me tell you again that you, you have to see the value 1 here. This one, where is the location of that one? So 1 you can write and its location is b13. Isn't it the first row, third column? But it is given that 1 is b. 1j and here in a simple sense that this one belongs to this one and this j is connected with this three so we know that the value of j is three actually in this question it column is missing isn't it first row it is first row but we don't know the column but one lies on third column so the value of j will be three now second third question now we have done Question number 2 also. Third question. Now bi2 equal to 5 is equal to b22. Now we have to see this 5. The location of this 5 is second row. Location of this 5 is second row, second column. Now we can write this is second row, second column, isn't it? So we can easily compare this i with 2. And here, here it was column, second column. We know that. Our element is in second column, and as we know, this element is 5, then we know the location of 5, it is second row, second column. So, row i is row, so row is 2. Say i is, that's mean, that means i is 2. 
So it concludes our third part also. If you have any confusion, then listen again to me. Now we have 5 as our element and it lies on, we know that it lies on second row, second column. Now as it is given that our element lie on I row and second column, second column, here also second column. And now row is missing, that is I. Value of I is to second. Now fourth. Then we know the, these elements B11, we know B11 is 2, you can see here right here B21 also we know B21 is minus 4 and we know B23 also, B23 is 3. So let's put the value of G, now let's put this value B11 is 2 and minus 4 and minus 3. Now let's see, that's our answer. Therefore G is equal to minus 5. Now there is one question for you to try. Now the questions are here. Answer these questions if this is you can do exactly in the same same like example too. Okay. The solution of this try this will be uh, exactly like example two. Now there are many more questions for. A few more questions. I can see these questions. You can try these questions. If you have understood example two, then you can easily do these questions. Not types of matrix. Now we are going to study about types. Let us observe these matrices and discuss. Now name the matrix or matrices with one row. We have to name that matrix which has only one row. Now as we know that this 2 is called row and this 1 is row. So we have only one matrix that is B. B is the matrix with, with one row. It is matrix B. Now name the matrix with one column. Now you can see the matrix this this column so we have a matrix A with one column and we have the matrix C with one column. Now, now this is Angel and this is her friend Tom and she is asking question to him why are you on to one row and one column topic Tom? Now as he is confused why he is uh, while discussing you are talking about the one row and one column now and he has the explanation oh angel it's because matrix with one row is called row matrix and matrix with one column is called column matrix now that is a definition this is the first we are we are on first and second type of matrix definition you can see 
row matrix. A matrix is a very easy and simple definition. A matrix with only one row is called row matrix. You can see the example. And column matrix, a matrix with only one column, column is called column matrix C, or you can see the matrix C or matrix A, both are column matrix because they have only one column. So these concepts are first two types of matrix. You can pause the video, you can write and note it down. Now let us observe these matrix. Uh, there are few matrix. Name the matrix or matrices having equal number of rows and columns. Now, we can find the matrix. You can see here row and column are equal. So, our, our first selection is A and our next selection will be C because you can see row and column, they are equal, isn't it? Here in this matrix, the, there are three rows and two columns, so they are unequal. There is only one row and three columns, so matrix D is also unequal. So it is matrix A and C, isn't it? A and C. In matrix A and C, rows and column are equal. Now there are three rows and two columns in matrix B. Uh, okay, how many rows and columns are there in matrix B? First, there is question. And the answer is there are three rows and two columns in matrix B. And how many rows and columns are there in matrix D? In matrix D, there are one row and three columns. And you can answer these questions very easily. And what is the common between matrix B and D? What is common matrix between these two matrix? Okay, uh, first thing you can say, uh, what you can say, okay, first thing. Okay, think about that answer. They both have unequal number of rows and columns. Isn't it unequal? Are they equal? In matrix A and D, number of rows and columns are equal. But in matrix B, uh, in matrix B and D, the number of rows and columns are unequal. Now, you can see that if we suppose rows as length and column as breadth, let's suppose row is length L equal to R and breadth B is equal to C. Now, then matrix A and C are called now see rows and column are equal means L equal to B. That means that means if it is a geometrical figure, okay, let's think that it is a geometrical figure. Now uh, it has the length and breadth is equal, then it is called think about it, it is called square. So the matrix A and C are called square matrix because they have because they have equal rows and column. Now similarly B and D are called we know that they are rectangular because they have unequal row, different value of our rows and column. So we are on to the definition now. It will be very easy for you to understand the definition. Square matrix, a matrix with equal number of rows and column is called square matrix. And another rectangular matrix, a matrix with unequal number of rows and column is called rectangular matrix. So we have concluded four, a type number four of our types of matrix. Now let's quickly move to another type. Okay, let's observe these matrices and then let's discuss A equal to, you can see that uh, all entries are zero and what does they mean? Now that's the marks uh, obtained in English, math and science by a student in first term, it's first term for second term and third term, first term, second term and third term. So, in I, A is matrix obtained by matrix, A is marks obtained by a student, A is marks obtained by a student on three major subjects like English, Math and Science across three terminal examination. And this is the, these are the marks. As the result, you can see is very poor, but it is very important for us right now. B is equal to, you can see another uh, matrix, that's a rainfall in MM in Sunday, Monday and Tuesday in three days. And B is a rainfall in Butol, in Butol, um, Butol sub metropolitan on three consecutive days Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. In one of the week of Jester, Jester, I think it's this month of Jester is dry month, especially in Tarai region, it's very hot and humid. And the rainfall, the chance of rainfall uh, on the in the month of Jester, uh, throughout the month of Jester, is very minimal. See, the temperature actually raises up to 40 degrees, 42 degrees, and that period 
in those days in this time. So rainfall, there was no rainfall. So on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, on on any any week. Okay. Check on it. Now, what is common on both metrics? You can see the common thing is all the elements on the both metrics is zero. You can answer it. All elements on both matrices are zero or null. You can say. So we call these metrics. We call these metrics a zero or null matrix. So we are quickly on to the type five. Our type five is null or zero matrix. Now definition you can see on your screen. A matrix with all elements zero is called zero or null matrix. Very simple definition, and you can see the example. You can give any any kind of example also. You can see a zero. See that is two cross two matrix and all elements are zero. Okay, let's move to type six. Let us consider a matrix, a uh, square matrix especially. Now you can see the matrix three point six, four point zero, three point two, four point zero, four point zero, three point six. 3.6, and 4.0. Now we know the order of this matrix. It is 3 cross 3. And it is a square matrix as the row and column are in Now what is the order of given matrix? You can easily answer this question. Order of matrix A is 3 cross 3 as there are 3 rows and 3 columns. Which type of matrix is A? The answer you can see as rows and columns are equal, so A is a square matrix. What is the value of A11? A22 a33 from ever matrix. What is the value of A11? A22, A33 from ever matrix. The answer you can see is the value of A11 is 3.6. You can see it is a it is a red. A22 is 4.0. A33 is 4.0. It is in red color. Is there any name for elements on position like A11, A22, A33, A44, and okay, AMM? Okay, if the order of matrix is M cross M. As the order of matrix, you can see the answer. Uh, there, there is a name or on any square matrix A11, A22, A33, A44 or AMM. If the order of matrix is M cross M. Uh, the name they are called these elements uh, on these locations elements on these locations are called principal or leading diagonal elements now these elements these elements on red color has a special name for them they are elements on principal diagonal now this part these elements let's highlight them that is 3.6 4.0 and 4.0 and these elements creates a diagonal on a matrix you can see and this diagonal is called leading or principal diagonal. Understood? Now this diagonal, it is a diagonal, is it? It is a diagonal, it is a square matrix and it is a diagonal, perfect diagonal. And elements residing on this diagonal are called principal diagonal elements and these elements are these elements form a diagonal and that diagonal is called principal diagonal. Reconstruct the matrix A with principal diagonal element. Reconstruct the matrix A with principal diagonal element unchanged and all other elements changed to zero. Now let's reconstruct this matrix uh, with principal diagonal element unchanged. Let's keep these uh, elements on principal diagonal as it is and all other elements will be zero. A equal to now let's see the elements. Now all other elements means 0. 3.6 belongs to the principal diagonal, leading diagonal. 
4.0 belongs to principal triangle, so it is not changed. 4.0. Now this type of matrix, these type of actually this type of matrix, uh, each are diagonal matrix, and this type of matrix is a diagonal matrix. Now for to be a diagonal matrix, there are sort few criteria. It must be a square matrix. Okay, the first criteria is square matrix, and in that square matrix, the leading or principal diagonal elements must be uh, non-zero, and all other elements must be zero. Now let's see the definition, and it's type six. You can see the definition on your screen. A square matrix with all elements zero except leading diagonal elements is called diagonal matrix. So, to be a diagonal matrix, it must be a square matrix, and plus as well as the leading diagonal element must be non-zero. So we can write this, note this down. We are on to another type. It is written on general form. Now this is a diagonal. This is a diagonal matrix. Uh, as we can see, the principal diagonal elements are non-zero, and the rest of the elements are zero. You can see the principal diagonal there. They are non-zero. And now let's see the scenario one. In the scenario one, there is an angle. And since the Angel and Tom are again discussing about something, A11, A22, A33 are elements of principal diagonal. And she is saying that, and she has a question for Tom what if A11 equal to A22 equal to A33 and that is equal to K or some value K? And that K is a scalar. A scalar is just a quantity, isn't it? It's quantity, it does not have any uh, direction. So a scalar is just a quantity, it's a value. So where k is any scalar? If all the diagonal elements are equal and they are equal to some value, all the diagonal elements are equal and they are equal to some value, then then, then what will happen? Now I think Tom has an answer for it. Oh Angel, if a11, a12, two elements on a11, actually a11 means elements on a11 equal to elements on a22 on elements element on a through 3 and e is equal to some value then it is called a scalar matrix and if we find this matrix where all the leading diagonal elements are equal or constant then we call such matrix scalar matrix okay now in scenario 2 angel again see has something riddle and a11 equal to a22 and a33 are elements of principal diagonal elements and they are equal also what if they are equal to 1, not k. This time, if all the elements on the principal diagonal are unity or 1, then 1 always, then what will happen? Then there is an answer. If O angel, if A11 elements on A11, A22, A33 uh, are equal and they are they are equal to unity then it is then it is called unit or identity matrix so we know what actually is a scalar matrix and what actually is identity matrix a scalar matrix and identity matrix are related to each other and for for a scalar matrix let's uh, let's revise in a very short way that for a scalar matrix all the principal diagonal elements the matrix must be diagonal matrix okay to be diagonal matrix it must be square matrix so we don't, don't have say that a matrix must be square matrix we can call it matrix must be diagonal matrix first thing is that matrix must be diagonal matrix diagonal matrix means all other elements will be zero and only principal non principal element okay only principal elements uh, elements on the principal diagonal uh, will be non zero and if those non zero principal diagonal elements are equal or they can say a constant to some value then it is called a scalar matrix and if they are equal, principal diagonal elements are equal, and they are equal to one, then that matrix uh, is called identity matrix. Now let's define first scalar matrix. Now you can see scalar for scalar matrix or diagonal matrix with all elements of the principal diagonal being equal is called scalar matrix. You can see the example where A and A are principal diagonal elements and they are equal. They are equal to some value that is A. 
and you can see here unit or identity or unit or identity matrix or diagonal matrix with all elements on principal diagonal element being one. Here, this thing is one. It must be always one. You can see it is identity matrix. So let's move to another type. We have already done type eight. And there are two more types, I think. Let us observe this matrix and let's discuss as our regular matrix. You can see A equal to A11, A12, A13, and 0. Now we know that A11, A22, A33 are the principal diagonal elements, and we can consider another matrix where B11, 0, and 0, B21, B22, B20, B31, B33, and we know that these two on these two matrix are 3 plus 3 matrix. And the common thing about these two matrix is their order. Okay. 3 cross 3. There is one more element to fill here. B33. Now you can see the question. What did you notice first on matrix A? What did you notice first on on matrix A other than it is a square matrix of order 3 plus 3. Now as we already know it is an order uh, square matrix of uh, order 3 plus 3 and other thing we can notice is that you can see what you have noticed just pause the video and think about it for a few minutes and okay you can uh, resume your video and you can see A11, A22, A833 they are principal diagonal elements and all elements below them are 0. Element below the principal diagonal R0. That same thing, and you can see the question right here. What did you notice first on matrix B other than the same type of question? Then it is a square matrix of order 3 plus 3. Now you can pause your video and you can think about it for a while and resume your video. Now you can see B11, B12. 2, 2 and B3 3 is a principal diagonal elements and all elements above them is 0. Elements above the principal diagonal are 0. Now, what is your observation on matrix A now? Now you can see the matrix now. What is your observation? Let's see the upper part of the matrix. It is in What is your observation on matrix A now? You can see the matrix A and your observation must be there is a triangle at upper part of matrix A. A triangle is created at the upper part of matrix A, isn't it? A triangle is created. You can clearly see the triangle is created on the upper part of matrix A and we can see the in matrix B also. Uh, what is your observation on matrix B now? Now you can easily tell that lower part of matrix B. Uh, there is a triangle at lower part of matrix B. You can see the triangle, perfect triangle there. There is a triangle at lower part of matrix B. So, now we are on to the definition. Triangular matrix. You can see the definition. If the elements below the principal diagonal of a square matrix is 0, then such matrix is called upper triangular matrix. Now, our Matrix A is an upper triangular matrix because all elements below the principal diagonal are 0. So our B is a lower triangular matrix if the elements above the principal diagonal of if triangle is formed at the lower part then it is called lower triangular matrix. If the triangle is formed at the upper part then it is called upper triangular matrix. Okay. We conclude the definition ninth type and I think we have one more type.
okay students one more type is remaining let us uh, study these two matrix matrices a you can see the matrix a and its components and it is a 3 cross 3 matrix and matrix B it is also 3, three cross 3 matrix and you can see its components Okay, this is also 3 cross 3 matrix and there are few questions uh, for us to discuss. Name the corresponding elements to A13 which is right here A13. We have to find the corresponding elements of A13 on matrix B. On matrix B. Now, first we must know what does corresponding element means. So, this is the frequently asked question from students. What does corresponding element means in matrix? Now, different elements occupy the same position on different matrix. For example, A12 is in matrix A and lies in first row, first column. Now, A12 is the position of elements on matrix A, isn't it? It's a position of any element or member or entries. On matrix A, that means first row, second column, and B one to lie on first row, second column. Now the same in the same position in another matrix, in the same position in another matrix, B one to B one to is the is the is the position of the element on first row, second column. That is the next matrix in another matrix. So A one to and B one to are the corresponding elements. Now to understand it more clearly, and um, in each and every class. The, there is a position of, of a student, isn't it? But the different student occupy different position in different class. Now the first boy of class nine, there must be, there can be a first boy of class nine, and there can be a first girl in class nine, and uh, class ten. So the rank is same. The rank is the position is same, but there are there are two different classes. The two different classes represent matrix, and two different student represent member of a matrix. And their position first, first, second, second, third, third are the corresponding position, corresponding ranks. Isn't it? So, in two matrix, if the same position is occupied, uh, occupied those 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 elements which occupy the same position on two different matrix, they are corresponding elements. Now, for A12, it's B12, and for A13, it's B13. So, our answer will be. The corresponding elements of A13 on matrix B is B13. So now see A13 first row third column, B13 first row third column. They are on two different matrix but they occupy the same position on two different matrices. Another question, name the corresponding elements. You can see and the answer is the corresponding elements of A1, A31 on matrix B is B31. So B31 is the corresponding element of A31. Third row, first column, third row, first column. Position is same, location is same. What if each and every elements? What if each and every corresponding elements are equal? Now there is one question for you. What if each and every elements are equal? The answer is in that case, if each and every elements are equal. So if A11 is equal to B11 or in the same way A33 is equal to B33, all matrix are equal, then we can say that A and B are identical matrix, they are same matrix and more precisely matrix A is equal to matrix B. Now the definition of equal matrix, uh, first let's see another frequently exclusion. Thus corresponding element exists if the matrix are of different order as um, corresponding elements do exist but one thing we have to be clear that not each and every element has corresponding elements. Now, only few elements will have corresponding elements. Now, it, it is a 2 plus 2 matrix with elements 1, uh, sorry,
with elements 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we have matrix B now the matrix A is of order 2 cross 2 and matrix B now if the matrix are of different order we are going to examine it 5, 6, uh, 7 we are constructing matrix B which is different in order to matrix A 8, 9 and 10 I can see this. Now, let's see the corresponding elements. Now, the corresponding element of 1 from matrix A is 5 from matrix B. Now, similarly, corresponding element of 2 from matrix A is the 6 from matrix B. And for 4 of matrix A, that is second row, first column, and 8 is in second row, first column. And for 3, it is 9. So, you can clearly see this 7 and 10 doesn't have corresponding elements. Okay, clear. Now, definition of equal matrix. You can see two matrix are said to be equal matrices. Two matrix are said to be equal matrices if they are if they are uh, corresponding elements are equal. Each and every corresponding elements must be equal. Here, C and D are equal matrix because their corresponding elements are equal. So uh, this completes uh, our types, and we move to exercise. Now try this. Now it is from introduction part. It is from types. Uh, it is from types. Normal matrix. You have to give two example of normal matrix, and while giving two examples, and choose a matrix of different order. Give example uh, in such a way that those two matrix are of different order. And for triangular matrix, uh, rectangular matrix, for all matrix, equal matrix. Uh, second question identify the matrix you can identify a a is a, a row matrix there is only one row and s is a square matrix k is a scale, uh, b is a scalar matrix i is the identity matrix of order 3 plus 3 so you can pause the video you can do your work and we can move to another example It's time for example 3 now and you can see the position on your screen matrix A, uh, A matrix A is of order 2 plus 2 matrix B is of order 2 plus 2 and it is given that A equal to B now we have to remember the definition of equal matrix uh, two matrix are said to be equal if their corresponding elements are equal but here it is already given that A is equal to B so that means already the corresponding elements of matrix A and B are equal so we will use the same concept we apply the same concept matrix B these are the given matrix now according to equation A equal to B Now let's replace A by its component matrix x minus 1, 3, 5 and y equal to B minus 3 x plus z w minus y and 2. So let's uh, you can see by the color also x minus 1 and minus 3 are, are of same color that means they are corresponding elements and they are equal by definition of equal matrix. x minus 1 is equal to minus 3 we can easily find the value of x or x is equal to minus 3 plus 1 which is x is equal to minus 2 now in the same way another um, another corresponding element that is first row second column there is 3 and first row second column x plus z so we can equate 3 equal to we can write 3 equal to x plus z and we have the value of x also so we can proceed further 3 is equal to x minus 2 plus z now 
3 plus 2 equal to z or 5 equal to z. Now the value of z is 5. Now we move to this red color y equal to 2 in 3 y is equal to 2. So this uh, it is complete here y equal to 2. No, we don't have to proceed any, for any further. Now last one that is uh, second row first color that is 5 and y minus and w minus y. So for second row first color 5. Now we have the value of y now. So 5 equal to w minus y. y that is 2. And 5 plus 2 equal to w. So value of w is 7. So this concludes our answer. This concludes our solution. Example 3. That is w equal to 7, x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 5. Now there are 4 or 5 questions for you to try. You can see questions on your screen. For each and every question, you have to do in a same way. Exactly same way. Now it's time for example 4. You can see the question on your screen. Find the values of x and y. A very important question. And this is a, uh, this is the example of uh, this is the example of equal matrix. Uh, you can see these two matrix are equal uh, and it is given as equal and we have to equate our corresponding elements like 2x minus 3y is equal to 1 and 3x plus y is equal to 9. Now the 2 comma 3 is the answer solution. You can see here. Now this is the given matrix equal to another matrix 1, 3, 3, 1. Now as we know according to equation it is a equal matrix. So, if matrix are equal, then by the definition of equal matrix, the corresponding elements are definitely equal. Now, our corresponding element 2x minus y will be equal to 1. You can see 2x minus y is in first row, first column. So, 1 is in first row, first column. So, corresponding elements are equal. Now, and another is second row, second column. That is 3x plus y and 9, second row, second column. So, 3x plus y is equal to 9. Now, this is equation 1. And we further proceed on this part 2x minus y and 2x minus 1 equal to y. y. Y is taken to right hand side and 1 is brought to left hand side. So we can replace this y right here. Okay. Replace this one. You can see by the color also. Now this is equation 2. This is equation 2. Now putting the value of y. From equation uh, 2, y from equation 2 is substituted on y of equation 1. Now this y will be substituted right here. You can see 3x which is already there and plus sign you can see and then y is replaced by 2x minus 1 equal to 9. Now let's open the bracket and as there is plus sign we don't have to worry about a changing of sign equal to 9. Now 3x plus 2x, we can write 5x and 1 goes to right hand side. Now 9 plus 1 is 10 or 5x is equal to 10. We can cancel 5 1 is 5 and 5 2 is 
and so value of x is 2 x value of x is 2 now now putting the value of x in equation 2 we will get the value of y we get value of y or 2 into 2 into 2 this is the value of x substituted value of x that is 4 minus 1 and 3 equal to 1 now this concludes our example 4 now the example x the answers are x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3 you can see the answer x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. Now there are three more questions for you to practice. Find the value of A and B and all these questions are done exactly like example 4. All these questions are done exactly like example 4. You can pause your video and you can complete your work. Now example 5. You can see example 5 and it, it is related with identity matrix 2 minus a c plus d b minus 1 c is an identity matrix. So this is an identity matrix and we have to recall the definition of identity matrix and so what is the definition of identity matrix? Any matrix is said to be identity matrix, any square matrix or you can say any diagonal matrix is said to be identity matrix if their principal diagonal elements are unity here it's a given part 2 minus a c plus t b minus 1 c is equal to i because it's given in the question that this matrix a given matrix is identity matrix so we can write i for it now that's equation one and we know for identity matrix we know by definition also we know that is identity matrix is 1001 isn't it 1001 so it's equation two and you can see by the logic that if a is equal to c and c is equal to b then we conclude that a equal to b so from 1 and 2 we can conclude that this matrix here it will be equal to this matrix here from, from 1 and 2 so we can write same thing 2 minus a c plus d b minus 1 and c equal to 1 0 0 1 so they are equal matrix now they are equal matrix so for equal matrix if we recall the definition then two matrix are said to be equal matrix if their corresponding elements are equal so they are already equal that means corresponding elements are also equal so by, by definition of equal matrix Two minus a is equal to one, and you can see the corresponding element two minus a. It is in first row first column, and we can clearly see one is on first row first column. So they are corresponding elements. <coughs> no, sorry, let's find the value of a. That is one. One is equal to a. Now we we have another corresponding elements also. Other corresponding elements also. Now two b minus 1 we are choosing b minus 1 because here c plus d if we choose this c plus d then both are unknown okay so let's move to b minus 1 is equal to 0 now we we can find easily we can easily find the value of b that is 1 again third that is c is equal to 1 we can directly write you can see c second row second column one second row second column now finally at last it's fourth c plus d you can see first row second column first row second column first row second column first row second column c plus d now we have the value of c we can replace it one plus d equal to zero now the value of d will be minus one now this concludes or example 5 and you can see there are uh, questions for you try this
all questions you have to do in a, exactly in the same way okay same way as example 5 okay now let's quickly move to last example that is uh, example 6 and it is related to scalar matrix Now we haven't done any question we have to ask, uh, scalar matrix now this is the one and only equation as an example is a scalar matrix now we have to recall the definition of the scalar matrix now the matrix must be diagonal matrix so any diagonal matrix with principal diagonal elements constant or equal now you can see principal diagonal element is our constant and you can see they are equal also principal diagonal element must be constant and equal constant or equal you can see it's 4 right here and all other elements must be 0 solution now here now this matrix is M and let's make equation 1 since A is a scalar matrix now by definition let's see the definition of a scalar matrix Let's recall it that is in type 7 is scalar matrix or diagonal matrix with all elements on principal diagonal. I read on your screen or diagonal matrix with all elements on principal diagonal or diagonal matrix with all elements on principal diagonal being equal is called scalar matrix. So, A equal to 4, 0, 0, 4. Now, that is equation 2. As equation 1 and 2 are equal, we can see we can equate the, the right hand side part of both equation 1 and 2. They are equal matrix and by definition of equal matrix, their corresponding elements are equal. 3x minus 6 is equal to 0 or 3x is equal to 6. 3x is equal to 6 and we can cancel x is equal to 2. Now, again, we have first row second column, 5p minus uh, so second row first column 5p minus 15 equal to 0 for second unknown 5p minus 15 equal to 0 or 5p equal to 15 and p is equal to 3 equal to 3 and therefore a it's not a it's x it's not a it's x x is equal to 2 and p is equal to 3 now there are questions for you to try now you can try these questions Both questions uh, you can do these both questions like exactly like example 6. Now, this concludes our entire uh, introduction and types of matrix topic. Um, there are more videos uh, to come uh, in coming weeks uh, about uh, operation of matrix and multiplication of matrix. Thank you for being with me and if you find this video useful for you and then it may be useful for your friends also. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much.